Jillian, killing it with the music. We're back on CFAX 1070. This is uh, CTV Vancouver Island's Joe Perkins filling in for Frank Stanford for day three of CTV Newsweek here on CFAX. Uh, we're speaking with a man Victoria knows fairly well, Ted Smith. He's been a, a marijuana activist and supporter for nearly two decades. Now he's writing and teaching. Uh, and we have you on, obviously, because of Initiative 502. Uh, a huge day. Washington votes 55% in favor of legalizing and taxing marijuana. Colorado, similar outcome. Uh, you must have been a pretty happy camper when you woke up this morning. Well, I was pretty happy going to bed last night. <laughs> Certainly, uh, you know, I wouldn't have been able to go to bed without uh, knowing what, what the results were looking like because this is uh, uh, the biggest day of my career. It's uh, uh, a birthday times 1,000 in, in a lot of ways. It's, uh, we're obviously, at least in my opinion, far away from this becoming a reality. I mean, federal court down in the U.S. could shut this down. There are many roadblocks still to come. It, it is a victory for activists of cannabis, clearly. Uh, you had an interesting point during the break, uh, a point that I don't think many people have thought of. Uh, in British Columbia, you think that if marijuana is legalized and taxed in Washington, that it's going to have a seriously negative impact on B.C., particularly the economy. Oh, I don't think that there's any doubt that if this program becomes implemented in, in Washington and Colorado, that it will affect our, our economy. And that's not just the pod industry, but the travel industry as well. Why? There are, I mean, are many people that travel here to British Columbia um, because of the freedoms that we enjoy. You know, in Vancouver right now, there's a, a couple of lounges you can go to. There's some seed banks where you can buy seeds there. There's uh, about a dozen dispensaries if you have a medical problem. There's a whole bunch of other things that are happening over there. Just this past weekend, I was in Vancouver for a conference. A guy flew here from Hawaii to come to this cannabis history conference. And, and so that kind of tourism would shift to the United States. Uh, in fact, I know cannabis activists who are down there right now for this and others that plan on you know, going down there. And uh, I was talking to members of the club that want to go down and do a, a big you know, kind of bus trip together to go see what it, it's like to, to not have to be in fear of the police when you're smoking, uh, smoking herb. So, uh, you know, there'll be this, this uh, um, you know, uh, move uh, to, 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 to tourists down there. The, the other, you know, more, more obvious impact will be the amount of herb that has been getting smuggled across the border. You know, that's been slowing down for a few years, um, but that's going to not only turn to a halt, but turn the opposite direction. You know, I, I'm just sort of can't wait to smoke my first Washington State pot that's been smuggled up here. Don't you think, though, and I mean, this is something that former uh, Attorney General Kashid has been advocating for for a long time, is the legalization of marijuana, arguing that, look, if you legalize it, uh, it's going to really throw a wrench in, in drug trade. Uh, it's going to cut off trade to Washington from B.C. Uh, apparently, there is quite a bit of money, quite a bit of marijuana that gets traded back across that border. Uh, do you see that happening? Do you see the legalization actually uh, curbing some of this drug trade? Oh, it's going to uh, cut into organized crimes profits huge. Um, it's you know uh, hard to predict exactly how much, but uh, I, I can tell you that growing cannabis for people that are involved in, in organized crime is one of the fastest and easiest ways to, to make money that they know of. So you're taking away their cash cow. Is it, and, uh, you know, they'll revert to their other devious crimes, but, you know, it, it, it won't be something where, you know, those other criminal activities will grow because this one here has been taken away. Is it, and I, I mean, I, I, need to, I need to ask, is, is it a slippery slope? If you legalize marijuana, uh, I mean, is that just going to open the door? For more problems i think some people would argue that i, I was watching uh some coverage for, for more drug problems or legal yeah problems? for any you know any problem you name it i mean there okay. was I, out of the states today there was issues uh and i believe it was out of colorado but there was a movement saying look uh even the smallest amount of marijuana does affect um alcohol test the readers uh i mean is is it a slippery slope if if we legalize marijuana uh, do you think that's going to open up the door for more problems? Um, I don't believe so. You know, there, there will be problems. You know, there's no perfect law and, and no perfect drug. 
Um, and so not everyone reacts positively to using cannabis. And so uh, there, there will be, you know, issues uh, come up, but they won't be a lot different than, than they are now because in places like BC, you know, whether it's legal or not, cannabis is available. And, and for people that would react negatively, you know, they're, much, they're just as likely to do it now as they would be under a legal climate. Um, and so uh, I, I, from my experience in using cannabis and being around people that have used it, I would think that our health care costs are going to go down for two reasons, because uh, as, as opposed to the gateway theory, it actually helps people get off of hard drugs and it helps people deal with other prescription drugs and medical problems that they would have. So one of our biggest increase in costs in, in government is, is prescription drug costs. And uh, I would think that people's health would improve if they had access to quality cannabis and our drug uh, or healthcare costs would go down. And I think the other drug problems that we see in society uh, would be lessened if people had access to uh, to, to cannabis and, and so uh, and we if we did a, a proper drug education in school that being said I, I, I personally believe that the drug war in general is is an absolute failure and, and is taking away people's rights uh, to, to use whatever drugs they want uh, is uh, both uh, a violation of, of our human rights and just not going to work it hasn't worked and, and, and will never work um, and so uh, um, you know I but I, I don't argue at this point that we need to legalize all drugs at once. I think we need to start with cannabis and, and allow you know that to play itself out. Um, Ted, we, we, we're running out of time here, but uh, before we go, uh, most people associate you with the Victoria Cannabis Club. You've actually pulled away recently and you're uh, pursuing some teaching and you have your book out if you can in 30 seconds or less. Uh, what do you have going on? Well, uh, Hempology 101 is something I've done for 17 years, but that's my full-time work now. And, so uh, we teach a free lecture series at the University of Victoria from 3 to 4 every Wednesday. Uh, we're going to do that in an hour. It's live cast on uh, the internet as well, but put up on YouTube if people can't make it. And next week we're actually leaving for Halifax to spread hempology onto other schools. So we're going to Dalhousie, Mount Allison, uh, I think Carleton and University of Toronto. We have uh, hempologies working at other schools. And so, yeah, I'm out teaching university students and uh, trying to educate the public about hemp and all this plant's valuable potential. Ted, thank you for coming on. We will see what happens. Uh, obviously, this is a big day for you. Uh, thank you for coming in and thank you for your time. We're going to take.